In this video, I will be updating you all on my Campanatus Modoc colony. It has been over a year since my last update on them, and I know this video has been long awaited and requested, so enjoy. Yes, it has been over a year since my last video. I will be making a dedicated video on that topic soon, but for now, let's get into this video. What's cool about this colony in particular, along with a couple of my other ones, is that I have their entire lives documented on film. From the moment I caught the queen and put her in her first test tube setup, to the moment I moved them into their first nest after she had her first workers, and now as a strong and flourishing ant colony. I will link some videos in the description of this colony's upbringing and founding process. I would say that this colony has around 100 workers now. There are always about three workers in the outworld at any given time looking for food or drinking from the liquid feeder. After moving this colony out of their Tarheel Ants mini hearth a few months ago, they are now housed in a Ants Australia acrylic nest size 2 and a medium sized Ants Australia Outworld. With that being said, it is time to do a little bit of maintenance on this colony. Here I have a Biformica liquid feeder. This is the main thing I use on the majority of my colonies now to give them their sugar source. It basically acts as a feeder where the ants can drink from it and I have to fill it up every once in a while. Depending on the species and size of your colony, it usually takes around a week for them to go through the small size feeder which is shown here. There are two parts to this feeder. One half is a little glass jar that screws onto the other half which is a 3D printed section where the ants drink from. Sometimes when I unscrew the feeder, the two halves get stuck together, and I just run them under some warm water, which you just saw. Once your jar is cleared out, the next thing to do is to refill it with your liquid of choice. You can fill it up with water as an extra water source, sunburst ant nectar, which I am showing off here, or you can mix it with honey water, which is half parts honey, half water and that creates a water-like consistency which the ants can easily drink. I mixed this particular jar with half parts sunburst ant nectar, half parts water. This allows me to give them their sugar source and water source at the same time. With that being said though, I do have an extra water source just in case. If for some reason I forget to water their nest one day, or if I'm going on vacation, it is always nice to have an extra water source. Here I have an extra water source from Tar Heel Ants. I got this from ordering my Tar Heel Ants mini hearth and adding a extra package for $15, which gives you extra supplies, a nest mate, and some tweezers along with this water source here. So what I'm doing now is I am cleaning out the mesh entrance with a Q-tip because over time it can get pretty disgusting. What I'm doing now is I'm going around the edges of the container because there is some stuff that got stuck in there as well. I used a Q-tip for this as well and I got the inside briefly with another Q-tip. Now I'm cleaning up their garbage site. I do this regularly so there is not much garbage, but I use a wet q-tip to easily gather all of the stuff and take it out with ease. Now I add everything back. The water source, the ant nectar, and that's it. Now I'm going to give them a mealworm. I cut it up with scissors and drop it in this feeding dish, which you can also get from that extra package from Tar Heel Ants. You can also make a feeding dish out of an extra bottle cap, which is what I used to do in the past.
Between the nest and the outworld, I have an adapter. This adapter will eventually house another Ants Australia acrylic nest for when this colony needs extra space and outgrows their current one. Which, as you can see, they're going to grow out of their current nest pretty soon. I think they have around 100 workers. I'm too lazy to count all of the ants in this clip. If you decide to count the ants in this clip, then let me know in the comments section below. Anyways, they have a couple of egg piles and they have some larvae. Before I moved them into this colony, they had a big boom in their population, so I'm pretty sure they're starting to slow down a bit for the winter. On the right side, there's the queen. You can tell that she's a lot larger than all of the other workers, except for a couple of the majors. One of those majors is on the bottom right of the nest. That one is just about the same size as the queen. I recommend to people who first catch their Campanatus queens is to leave them in the test tube setup until they outgrow the test tube or have around 20 workers, then move them into a Tar Heel Ant mini hearth. I've noticed that with all of my Campanatus colonies that I've ever had, they've done super well in the mini hearth. After which you can either move them into another Tar Heel Ants formicarium, or you can move them into something like this one I have here. That's about it for this week's video. I hope you all enjoyed the update on my Campanatus Modoc colony because a lot has changed since the last time I featured them on the channel. My next upload will be really soon, so I hope you all stay tuned for that and have a great rest of your day. Peace.